Welcome to episode 113 of the Inside Bite. I'm your host, Tim Schaefer. I'm here with my co-host, Rudy. Before anything, we're going to do things very different. Starfield is now out, and I yes. want to go like really deep into it. You haven't played, started it, or anything like that, right? No, I haven't yet. Okay, so we're gonna do yeah. what we did, like Baldur's Goat, Baldur's Goat, Baldur's Gate. I mean, it may Baldur's be the Gate goat. The goat. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna do with that. Just try to ask me anything that you're just super. What you're just curious of what you'd want to know. Sure. But before we even get into it, since all I'm gonna be doing is talking on Starfield when it comes to what I'm watching and playing, I right. figured. Go ahead and get it out of the way in the beginning. If there's anything you're watching or playing that you want to mention, let's just throw it out there okay. now because I'm going to okay. go way into Starfield and I don't even want to worry about the news. If we get to the news, we do. But if if it somehow led end up talking nothing but Starfield, then just cool. And we'll just end it at Starfield and finish the episode. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. really try to get anything and everything. And I'm going to try the same. And whenever I feel like it's a good place to stop, we'll stop. We'll mention whatever new stuff. Okay. And then we'll go on. But I'm not going to worry about anything other than Starfield. And that's going to be the main focus of this episode. So. Okay, that works. Okay. Yeah, sounds good to me. All right. I'm down for that. Is there anything you want to mention, though, before we get into Starfield? Yes, yes. So okay. I already, as soon as Armored Core came out, I did start playing it, right? I, I, I liked it, but it was like I was having fun, but it wasn't like I was getting obsessed with it, right? And yeah. this past weekend, I started really getting into it, customizing, doing the trainings, the arena battles, and now I'm like really, really starting to get into it. So I'm just finishing chapter one, and I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but there's quite a large number of missions in chapter one. What is the, I don't remember where chapter one ends. Like, well, what What did you so, just recently do? The only reason I know it ends is because it says, you know, this chapter ends, excuse me, this mission ends chapter one. And it's one basically where you go through, you fight like a somewhat of a mini boss or something. But then at the very end, you fight another, excuse me, another boss that has a pulse shield. And he's like a big sort of machine. He, you get to like a wall and he comes down from the wall and he stops you. I, oh, 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 I remember. Okay. Basically, there's a guy you fight that you get to the wall. He comes down. They're like, oh, it's this guy. You fight him. You kill it's him. It's another mech similar to your size. Another mech, you but fight. he's got it. He's yeah. got a pulse shield this time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm fighting him right now. Okay. And I just, I can't, I can't save in the middle of that spot. Like you can go customize stuff. Sure. But you can't quit the mission and come back in. And I'm on my Steam deck now, which I wish I could finish this battle on the computer, but I don't want to do the whole mission again. So that's where I'm at right now. So. Okay. I'm really enjoying it, man. I think it's a lot of fun. So yeah, so now I'm really getting into it. So yeah. About that is the boss that I'm on, I kept replaying because I didn't want to start from the beginning of the mission, but I really feel like I need different gear than what I have, but I keep mixing right. up to what you I can change without buying anything new. Right. And I've right. tried everything I can think of and I can't beat this boss. And so after I don't I want to say three or four hours just non-stop on this boss i found like all right <laughs> i give up it's like two in the morning i gotta go to bed i guess you know i'm a restart and that way i can at least buy new equipment because what i'm realizing is i just need a really good way of taking down shields and i don't have that equipment. sure even in my arsenal too equipped kind of deal so i'm dealing with that but now that i'm restarting i'll be able to take down the shields and get around this boss that I was stuck on. I want to say I went from like 10 p.m. all the way to like 1.30 in the morning, and I just could not beat him, and it was driving me insane. And the problem is, is he's at the end of a level, and I didn't even know this boss was coming because you you play a level, you fight a boss at the end, and then it's like a boss after the boss kind of deal, and he was hard as hell. Gotcha. And, and he's not, is this past chapter one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Gotcha. All right. Very cool. Um, I'm excited to keep going and see where it all goes. I see people posting like, oh, chapter two was crazy. Chapter three, was, you know, so I'm yeah. looking forward to it. And I, it's great on the Steam Deck. I, I just bumped. I knocked the settings down to medium instead of high. And it helped the frame rate bump up, like stay a steady 60. And once I did that, it was fine. It feels great on the Steam Deck, though. It's yes, perfect, yes. perfect game to play on the Steam Deck. So pretty awesome. So, yeah, man. Okay. Well, let's get into Starfield then. And... Just ask a bunch of questions, and then I'm going to go into experiences outside of those questions. But okay. again, as I'm going into it, if you have a question that you're then reminded of as I'm explaining X, Y, and Z, obviously ask then. 
performance, what I think of the game, mm-hmm. sure. uh, soundtrack, whatever you could possibly think of that you'd be curious on. All right. So let's start with the stuff that's maybe not as exciting, but important. Yeah. So where are you? You're playing on Xbox, on Series X or on PC? I'm playing both. So I'm okay. going back and forth between them. I'm playing like on the Xbox for TV. I'm going back to my PC and playing on PC. All right. So I guess let's start with PC. How's the how's the performance to you? Has it been good? Has it been what do you think? Loading times? I see people complain about loading times on Series X. Is it like that on PC or what do you think? So my specs, basically, my card is somewhere between a 2080 and a 3080, let's say. <laughs> so you get an idea of my graphics card there. So let's say, let's just say like a probably a 3060. Um, if you're aware of what that would be, that basically be probably where my card sits. Maybe 3070. I don't know. Somewhere in there. But an AMD side, so it's a little different. Now, Starfield does have FSR 2.0 right. to where they don't... I don't think they have a DLSS option. But I want to look that up and make sure. Okay. Because let's go ahead and get that figured out. Um, okay, it does. Okay, cool. I was worried about that because I know they had a lot of AMD sponsorship and I was thinking maybe they wouldn't do DLSS just because they were so hardcore leaning into AMD. But that's cool to see that they actually do have it. Okay. Okay, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, but not that games should be leaning on it. I'm starting to get annoyed that games are starting to like almost require it. And it's like, like come on, chill. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Instead of making your well-performing game better, yes, you know, for lower end systems, it's like, hey, if you don't have DLSS turned on, good luck. Yeah, no. So how this basically with me, I can play like medium settings, 1440p, get 60, right? Which this game is pretty demanding, so that's pretty good. I mean, there's a, it's really demanding actually, and which is really weird. Like. Some people think it looks fantastic, and I keep seeing a lot of people say, like, eh, it doesn't look too hot. I think it's in, like, let's say, pure technical feet, right? Let's No artistic vision whatsoever, just pure, like, horsepower, uh, texture, power, whatever you want to word it. I would say it's in the top 20 of games that are out right now. Maybe top okay. 10, you can fit in that argument. But I think this game is gorgeous on its artistic vision and especially when you're seeing like planet ship flying and it's varied but every time it's a different environment it still looks incredible to me okay but there are spots to where i'm like okay this could look a little rough that could be a little rough i'm sure i can make a highlight video of really ugly things and probably fill up a 10 minute video purposely sure. isolating a lot of things like oh this is an ugly character that walked by and try to pinpoint them but uh i think the characters a lot of people are pointing them out they're i mean they're far better than what cyberpunk is when it comes to the characters walking around there's some really bad characters in cyberpunk when you're starting to notice yeah, just npcs sure. walking around so i'll say that um but anyway okay. ask what you asked again though i was just saying about the performance in general like okay, okay, okay frame rate and the load times. i can i can hit 60 on and play on high and i can maybe lower a few things to medium if i want to play 1440p now if i put it to 1080 um, you're talking ultra no problem right but i want to play at 1440p so mm-hmm. with no fsr i can get 60 on like high a few things medium at 1440p the very moment i turn fsr on at 2.0 now i can start going into high and ultra on things and i can start like um messing with that so i can get 1440. okay and and how about the load times how are they um i mean that's all going to be dependent on your ssd you right. have to install an ssd now okay Remember, that was a whole thing of, like, do you have to? Well, I tried to install it not on the SSD. Remember, I just installed it on my drive yeah. anyway. I don't know what's <laughs> going to happen. It ran, but um, I'm talking every 10 seconds, huge hitch. <laughs> and I'm like, holy hell. I realized it was on an external. I'm like, well, maybe because it's external and not internal. I move it to an internal hard drive. Better, but not good. I, I'm getting a hitch every, like, 30 seconds. That's pretty major. And I was like, damn. 
the very moment I put on SSD, all that went away. Load times are real quick. I'm talking like the load times were never the problem. Even on the external, I was still yeah. getting like a second or two or three, and then I'm then it wasn't a big deal. It it's just I was getting these weird hitches that just kept happening until I put it on the SSD, and then I no longer got it. So you're talking like if I hit a load screen, one, two, three seconds max, usually a second or two, and then I'm on. Um, so they're, they're really quick and this is a normal SSD. This ain't even like an M2 or anything. Gotcha. Okay. Do you okay. have an M2 installed? Um, yes. Yeah. Okay. I have my so that's even faster. one that was on the computer, but I don't use that one as much. I throw them a lot on the, um, the other one I have, like okay. the standard okay. SSD. Um, all right. Well, I'm glad to hear that. It's 140 um, gigs and that's why like my, my SSD only has 215, I want to say. So I had to move a ton of stuff and it's pretty much Windows OS and the game and that's it. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Oh, sorry. One last thing on performance is I've played all these other big hot, not, not current. Current's been okay. You know, when it comes to big releases, but let's just say like earlier in this year when we had like Jedi and whatever, right? There, there was what is there about a year to where we're getting real bad releases like last of us and all that. Now that this huge new wave has started, I haven't really been seeing games being bad performance wise, but I'm telling you right now, if you compare Starfield to those like bad batch of games, it's leagues better, you know, the, like, um, it's yeah. Performance is totally normal. Good. It could, you know, it all depends on your specs, but I've seen it be able to perform. Like you said, th those, those, um, minimum requirements needed to run the game are pretty low. And I looked on YouTube just to see like lower spec cards than mine, lower spec CPUs. They can still get 60 if they just play on like lower settings. So it doesn't seem to be a problem. It's there's no like weird tech technical issues with this game. Like we were gotcha. having for a bit. That's, that's not okay. a thing to hear. Okay. Glad to hear that. Yeah. Um, how about the exploration, you know, going from planet to planet? Do you feel that all planets are created equal or are there some where you're like, this is a waste, there's nothing here? Like, what do you, what do you so think So I that? think this is a conversation that's kind of pointless, which is weird. Uh, going into the game, I was worried about this. Playing the game, I'm like, oh, this is, you can't, that question's kind of pointless. So what it is, is I'm going on accepting missions, whether it's main story missions or side missions, right? I'm accepting them. I'm doing them. I'm not just go flying to a random planet and mining or something. Why would I even want to? That's just nothing I care about right. doing. So I don't really, I'm not really in that realm. I'm just following these missions. So when I go to a planet and go to these points of interest to get X, Y, or Z done with the mission, you know, maybe the mission may want me to do something outside of like that one base where I need to go a little bit to get something or find a secret cave or something like that. But I'm not just roaming the planet for no reason. I feel that'd be pretty boring and I don't know why I would even want to do that. Now, I right. can explore the whole planet and this is a whole controversy right now, which I don't know if you saw my post, but I keep seeing a lot of people think. It reminds me of The Last of Us 2. Remember uh, before that game out, there was a whole bunch of fake leaks that weren't even true? Mm -hmm. That's what happened with Starfield, yep. of people thinking that you can't explore an entire planet. You can. All is because of this video where this guy was traveling for a while, right? I want to say it's like, I don't know, 2,500 meters or something like that. You'll eventually hit a wall saying, hey, you can't go any further anymore. What it's getting at is from your ship. You can go in your ship pick any spot on the planet, go there, and you you are basically tethered to your ship, but the distance is really far. You're talking 20 minutes before you would ever be too far from your ship. You can gotcha. fast travel back to your ship, land anywhere else. Literally, you just click a spot on the planet and land there. So you can explore the entire planet. You just can't be too tethered from your ship. So that could be a hindrance to somebody, I guess. But again, uh, the fact of oh, they lied and said you couldn't explore the planet. No one lied. Okay, calm down. You can explore the planet. You just can't be too far from your ship is what it really is. So Gotcha. 
Um, okay. Which I think that has something to do with like items and stuff. Because if you have, think about how big an actual planet is. This isn't like it is to scale of a planet. You have to think like, okay, Spider Man. You have a whole city, and it seems pretty large. Imagine a game where where you can explore an entire nation. I mean, it'd take you ages. It'd be literally pointless to do make such a game, much less an entire planet, much less a thousand of these planets. So sure. then you're like, well, well, then why the hell are they doing it? I guess because they can. <laughs> but again, there's no reason sure. for you to be doing this unless you just want to. Um, so uh, as I'm playing, this isn't a thing that I'm worried about, that I'm doing, that's hindering me, that's stopping me from doing X, Y, and Z. There's about four or five main points of interest on a planet. And you go up in okay. there, you do X, Y, and Z. There's no reason for you to detour from that. Otherwise... You, you could find different monsters or maybe a, a, a random cave or random resources or something like that. But there's no way, like, all over the entire planet, they're going to have, what, thousands of different bases and different, what, millions of NPCs? Because think of planet Earth, right? How many people are on this? Billions? You, yeah. You're not going to make a game with a billion people on a planet. Right, obviously. And go and talk to a billion people, then fly over to a different planet. Yeah, it's, and that'd yeah. be—I mean, I mean, that'd be totally <laughs> <That's> crazy. <laughs> be literally impossible to make. Um, if if they did, those characters would be what, like the ugliest, weirdest things you've ever seen in your life. Uh, so, gotcha. Okay. No, so that's not a thing. That's not. I don't. That's just kind of. I wouldn't concern myself with that question. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me see if there's anything else I can think of. How's the combat? Um, it's leagues better than Fallout, I'll tell you that, because it is gunplay, so it's Bethesda and it's, it's a first-person shooter, right? But if you played like, I don't know if you played seventy-six, but technically that'd feel a little better than four, which would feel a little better than three. They got a little better as they went, but nothing. Still pretty, like super basic compared to shooting. Gotcha. This okay. feels like just a normal game. There's, no, It doesn't feel like Doom. It doesn't feel like gotcha. Wolfenstein, anything like that. But gotcha. it totally feels normal shooting. It doesn't feel okay. bad whatsoever. You can aim down sights. You can modify guns. You can add iron sight, laser sight, whatever. <laughs> um, you There's plethora of different guns. It's really fun because like uh, when you bring up quick access for you to like you you favorite your weapons or even items right but you'll have like four to the left four up four down four right so when you bring up you hit l1 it brings up the menu oh, well, actually you just hit up down left or right on the d-pad and then you can cycle through the quick access select a different gun go back to the action it actually okay. feels pretty good there um, and so what I'll do is I'll have like one slot saved to like my med packs. Um, if I've run out of med packs, I'll purposely slot in in of something else that would heal me. And then all other options are weapons because I keep finding so many and there's so many options or even like grenades or mines or anything like that. I think the combat is really fun. Again, in, in terms of just the straight raw feel of the gunplay, it's, it's not exceptional. But I, I'm trying to think of what I would compare it to. I don't know. I guess like how a shooter would feel 2007 or something that was like okay. competent for the time. Okay. It feels Fair totally enough. fine and good. Yeah. Um, How's the, uh, I guess the last thing I'm wondering is just how do you feel about the story? Do you care about it? Is it interesting? Oh, sorry. One like... more with the gameplay I just thought of yeah. is I started the game on hard. Because I okay. saw a lot of people complain that the AI doesn't really react that much. And a lot of times they won't be shooting back and stuff like that. So they've always been bothered by that. And I've been, I saw so many reviews mention that. Now maybe they patched it. I don't know. But it scared me. So I was like, well, screw it. I'm just going to start on hard. Right. So I have, I, I have yet to even move back to medium. Now, it has been kicking my ass. I'm like, damn, this is real hard. And I don't know if I should keep going, but I'm trying. I'm 22 hours in. 
and I'm still feel like I'm like putting up with it, but I still kind of want to drop it down because holy hell is it hard, but I'd rather it be hard than them not shoot back and be easy. Um, gotcha. And I'm telling you, in hard at least, they are definitely responding almost too good. I'm telling you, I peek my head out the corner and it's getting shot. It's hard, dude. <laughs> like okay. I feel like I'm playing like Halo on Legendary, but I will say it's there. When you bump the difficulty, it's just not like oh now they're spongier. No, they're they're definitely fighting back with a lot of force, and it's been pretty difficult because of that. But you know, maybe that's why I'm liking it so much. You know, I think I'm just going to keep it on hard and just eventually, hey, I'll just keep getting more powerful and I'll just, if I'm 22 hours in and I can still hang with it, even though I feel like I'm like tempted to move it down, I'm I'm not. And I'm just going to stick with it. So maybe that's gotcha. what okay. you should do. I don't know. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. All right. All right. And lastly, I guess I'm just wondering about the story and the characters and stuff. How do you feel about all that? That's my favorite part in the game. Okay. Screw everything else. The reason I'm I'm playing RPG is to just see the plot lines of like this mission and where does it go and what happens with the characters or the plot in general with it, all of that. This is my favorite part of this game. It is so good. Even random, I thought they'd be I was noticing, man, these missions are a little too good. Maybe it's just main story ones. Let me accept a bunch of missions on these kiosks and see how good those are. And I found those were even better than the main ones, and I was already in love with the main ones. I'm like, shit, dude, this, the missions are really good in this game. I'm really shocked at how great. And and I'm telling you, it will be some stuff that Cyberpunk wish they could do. You, There were some highlights that were really awesome. You know in Cyberpunk to where, like, you would randomly talk to a person and somehow get a little side mission out of it, and it ends up becoming pretty cool in the end? I remember like two or three instances of that. Starfield, I've already went down 10 of these. And I'm, like I said, 22 hours in. And it's really strong and just like, oh, over here's some people talking. And then I'll talk to them after their argument. And then it'll lead into like, oh, actually, do you want to help me out with this? And I agree to it and go down this chain of events that ends up super cool in the end. And I've been really... That's why I love this game so much. And that's why I'm completely sold on this game is because of that reason. Gotcha. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's all great to hear. I'm really looking forward to playing this game eventually. You know, once I get through uh Armored Core, Final Fantasy, Zelda. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. But it'll be there. I'm I'm definitely gonna jump in eventually. So all right, but that all sounds great. So um I'm excited about it, you know. You know how like in Cyberpunk where you had the missions with the the uh, car robot guy. What was his name? Started with a D. Wait, it's Cyberpunk. Yeah, started with a D. Oh my god, it's it was, been so it, long. It was like it was a bunch of car missions. Oh, to, like, it's oh oh oh. I. It's like the mini. Oh my god, yeah. the something. Now it's gonna bother me. And I Hold remember on. accepting that, not thinking it was gonna turn anything big, and it ended up being amazing. That's how I. That was that was an awesome one. That's how I keep feeling these Star Starfield missions are. I'm like. Damn, I had no idea it would turn. Oh, Delamain. Delamain. Yeah. That's what it is. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, okay, that's 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 yeah. awesome, actually. Or I set something super tiny and it leads into completing a full on war between different planets and coming out the other end of like also persuasion is a big thing in this game. You can get a lot of things done pretty majorly with persuasion. And anytime I have an opportunity to use persuasion, I'm definitely using it. And I'm making huge moves because of it. And so I'm now that I'm doing it so much, I'm I want to just pour a bunch of points into persuasion and keep going down this path because I've gotten so many good items and plot turns because of the persuasion. I really, really like it. Uh, let's say I'm trying to think of some negatives that people have about Starfield and uh, try to say like my point on it. I know. Oh, okay. Uh, space combat. A lot of people were complaining about that. That I think was the worst part of this whole game. Whenever I was playing it, until I eventually had a string of missions where I had to do space combat, and I'm like, God, this sucks. I really don't want to do this. And I've died a million times. I'm just, 
I didn't feel like I didn't understand it. It seemed really easy. I just kept like, why the hell am I dying so easily? And why is it taking forever to kill them? And I don't get like, but like, it's like, dude, you only get like, okay, you have your missiles, you have your main gun. What am I missing? I don't understand. I don't even understand how to even dodge from when a ship's flying directly at you and shooting you or locking onto you. And I'm just like, oh, I don't know how to escape this because all I can do is really just look up or look down or turn left or turn right. But I don't feel like I can do like a Star Fox, like, you know, a barrel roll or do like a big loop around real quick or anything like that. There's no like tricks or button or anything like that. So I'm like, I don't understand. But I went down this whole chain of events where I had to do it and do it a lot. Um, right. But I was so invested into the story of it that I just kept going. And it was a string of missions last me about five hours. And it was one of the ones I accepted on the kiosk. But by the end, I finally came out on the other side. I'm like, holy crap. It almost felt like Smash Bros to where like it felt basic. But once I really understood the entrances, I started to my mind started to open up and be like, oh, I can actually dodge missiles that are homing at me. I just didn't know how. Or, oh, I do have way more weapons in my disposal than what I realized. Oh, gotcha. they, I got to deplete their shield with this type of weapon and then start hitting them with this other type of weapon once their shield's down. Don't keep using the same one. Stuff like that. But the game doesn't really tell you any of that. It hard, you hardly... I don't, so maybe it's bad onboarding when it comes to the ship combat. You know, I could ding it in that. But now that I understand it, it's really great. And now I look for it because I'm starting to, like, put a bunch of points into my ship and really starting to enjoy it and getting really good. Because it's the coolest part of the game outside of the plots, like the gameplay-wise, is when I'm flying around space and I come across a ship. I can destroy its shields dock myself onto their ship, go inside of their ship, and screw them up, take all their shit. If I just exploit the sh exploded the ship, I wouldn't be able to get X, Y, or Z items because it would all just blow into smithereens, right? And I can get like, like ship parts that I can put toward it and things, but I couldn't go like find a cool gun or anything like that, right? So I'm purposely finding ships and basically being a pirate and trying to find really good loot on these ships, and it's becoming really fun because of that. So I'm really obsessing over the, sp the space combat now. And it's becoming one of my favorite combat bits. So that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, it definitely looks cool. It looks like something I'd be interested in. I see videos of people putting up things to like make it look bad. I understand. There's Listen, there's always going to be stuff like this in a lot of games. I get it. Like I saw a video of like <laughs> you're shooting in the street. No one's reacting to it. Okay. Like I dealt with that in Cyberpunk too. It's fine. I'm sure it's still a great game. Yeah, you can't you can't like do that. Um, this is like you can't go into a city and shoot people. People aren't gonna react. That's not the type of game this is. If you right. go into a hostile environment, then you're allowed to shoot, but you <laughs> can't shoot you can't shoot normal NPCs. You can't even shoot your party members. So just know that. It's it's not that type of game. I'm fine with that anyway, but yeah all right i mean hey it sounds really cool i'm I'm really excited that everyone's loving this game and uh, people are enjoying it it seems like the perfect game that i'll play when i have an extended break or something like that so the only reason i got it the first is because again i had monday i had saturday sunday monday off and i haven't been able to like 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 i was saying last episode man i'm just so drained just doing tons of stuff constantly and I purposely just walled off anything I had to do. And I just took those three days. And all I did is just play Starfield. <laughs> and I got ranked up to 22 hours within that, like I said. And I'm now really obsessed. And this is hitting up like, this is better than Armor Core to me. This is better than Baldur's Gate 3 for me. This is this is like, it's like this or Zelda that I'm going to have to pick as like what I want in terms of you know, game of the year talk, it's going to be choosing between these two. And I think Starfield is incredibly strong title. And I think people need to just stop trying to do some console war or whatever the case, stop trying to have an agenda, just play the fucking game. <laughs> Definitely just Skyrim in space. Expect that out of it. Again, you're not going to be shooting random NPCs in the streets. It has really cool narrative, really cool uh, mission structure. Honestly, 
I didn't like Fallout 3 or 4. I didn't like Skyrim. The only Bethesda games I like are Mer Morrowind and Oblivion. Anything after that, I've been whatever on. Because when Fallout 3 came out, it was just... I'm like, this game's gross. It's just full of bugs. It plays <laughs> yeah. like crap. I don't get it. You know? Um, I guess it was just so good at, like, being one of the first grand open world games. Sure, sure, and sure. And all of that. But I just thought it was just a broken, buggy mess. Same with Skyrim. I thought the exact same thing. And I was like, I don't get what people are seeing out of this. But I realized now that, well, you know, bugs aside, there's still a lot of good under there. Well, with Starfield, this this is polished, really polished. And like I'm feeling like, wow, this actually feels like how they used to make games when it comes to Morrowind or Oblivion. Especially like even Oblivion had a lot more problems than Starfield even had. And this was before they went to this broken buggy mess crap. So it's I mean, you're talking like 20 years since they've <laughs> released a polished product. In my opinion, Starfield's a, a polished product. It's very, heard, very yeah. large game. And I'm sure you can find some weird exploits of trying to exploit XP or something. I don't know. I have yet to see or know of it. But I'm 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 sure it's not just I'm sure critically, like Baldur's Gate 3 and of what I played of both, I played similar hours in. And if I had to just put opinions aside and be super critical, I would say like, okay, Baldur's Gate 3 is the more polished and better made product of the two. But that doesn't mean I like it more. Like, I'm liking Starfield a lot because of the type of game it is. I'm way more into first-person shooter and space stuff. And and the uh, the quest seemed way more cool to me than, like, fantasy-type things. You know what I mean? So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. Yeah. It sounds awesome. I think that this is going to be a game. Like, I've always been kind of overwhelmed by games like this but i do enjoy them i've never beaten any of these games though like skyrim and all those type of games i've played them i've enjoyed them they've been fun never really saw them through you know so i think this one i don't want to start it now and then not see it through you know i'll come back to it when i have more time but i do definitely want to play this game and it'll only get better from here i'm sure so again i don't yeah. i don't even think there's any problems with it of anything that it no i don't mean like that i better. mean you know maybe they add some content or maybe oh, little okay. tweaks that aren't really that big of a deal, but they'll still make the game better. You know, things like that. I'm, I'm thinking. I'm of. looking forward to the mods, and they are open about like, hey, they have that workshop there on purpose. They've mentioned a million times, being like, we want people to mod this game. I'm looking forward to like, I would want vehicles. Like when you're on a planet, being able to ride around in a vehicle would be cool. They don't have that. Um, I'm trying to think. There's not really many things that I'm like. Man, I wish they had this. That's that's about it that I can think of. I think everything else is pretty good. I saw Chris Ray Gunn said he didn't have a bug for like, he said it was like 35 hours and then he finally had one bug. So I was like, oh, definitely better than their track record. I, I sure. have I have yet to find a bug myself either. That's what I'm saying. It feels very polished and and really pretty. I don't I don't know, man. And like, I don't understand why people are saying this game doesn't look good. This game looks so freaking awesome whatever. i've seen many shots of the game that look amazing and then i've seen like some npcs that look like shit i mean that, yeah I, i've I'm seen not some bad looking that. npcs but i don't know when have i not seen bad looking npcs in a video game that's what yeah, i want to yeah, know yeah. tell me one video game that has every npc looks good no. yeah yeah that's fair like that's even Baldur's gate 3 they have some bad looking npcs like i don't right right i'm super super high on it this is this is like what i was doing with zelda i was just I played it a ton and got super obsessed. And uh, this is going to be something, I don't know, I play for years. That's awesome. Um, I, I've heard many people say, hey, once you beat the game, then it really opens up to really cool things. I've heard that don't want to yeah. say what it is. And now I'm incredibly curious. Like, what, what could they be getting at? Because it's like, oh, it really opens up. What do you mean? At any time, I could just go to a planet. And if it was just mining yeah. or some miscellaneous BS... There'd be no point in mentioning this. There's got to be what what could they be getting at is where I, is very curious. Well, I saw someone say that they they're like, since I played near Automata, this is the, the this, that's the last time I felt the way I feel about an ending as this game or something like cool. that. I was like, oh, crap, that's kind of that's cool. big praise. You know, I could so. see that because already I'm seeing strings of some really in depth like human philosophy sort of question things which is really neat i'm all about that so i'm really enjoying the game because of the narrative 
like I said. That's awesome. All right, really strong. Cool. Yeah. I'm yeah. glad you're enjoying it. All right. Let's see. Let's let's because I don't want to go through all this news. I want to see yeah, what I do want choose. to talk on. Well, we should definitely talk about. I know it's far down, but Mario Wonder a little bit maybe. Last episode we were saying it's coming. Mm-hmm. We actually got it out. I'm going to pull. This is from Charles Hart or Harte. I'm unsure. Of uh, over at Game Informer. And this is him listing everything we learned from today's Super Mario Bros. Wonder Direct. I was already sold on the game, but the stuff I saw made me even more excited about it. So, Oh, yeah. All right. Super Mario Bros. Wonder is right around the corner, but outside of the initial reveal trailer, we didn't know much about Nintendo's latest 2D platformer. However, today's showcase was packed to the brim with gameplay reveals and new details. And now we've got a much clearer picture of what this game will look like. Wonder no longer. Here's everything we learned from the Super Mario Bros. Wonder Direct. The game starts when Prince Florian, ruler of the Flower Kingdom, has his castle stolen by Bowser. After fusing with a Wonder Flower, the King of the Koopas is able to fly over this new land, populating it with chaotic cronies. As always, it's up to Mario and his friends to save the day, but this time around, he's got more buddies than usual. In addition to Luigi, Peach, and a pair of Toads, Toadette and Daisy are along for the ride. Unlike some past games, each character here plays the same, meaning Peach has no built-in floating ability and Luigi jumps just as high as Mario. For younger or less skilled players, you can also play as Yoshi or Nabbit, the latter of which is returning from his debut in New Super Luigi U. Neither of these characters take damage from enemies, so they're useful for people who really want to play the game with less of a challenge. The Yoshis also retain their signature flutter jump and swallowing abilities, and they can even be ridden by other players. Yes. I want to play as Yoshi really badly, but (laughs) Yoshi's baby mode. I'm like, come on. Oh, I was so annoyed. I was upset about this too. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Because Yoshi's a great character to play with, obviously. (laughs) Um, the Flower Kingdom is made up of seven worlds, Pipe Rock Plateau, Fluff Puff Peaks, Shining Falls, the Petal Isles, and three more that have yet to be named. The map is traversed like a standard Mario overworld, locking you to certain paths on your way to a set of ordered courses, but there's also sections where you can move around freely. I love that. And yeah. tackle courses in any order. There will also be a course menu you can use to easily access courses in case you don't feel like walking there every time. Once you enter one of the courses, there are a few new power-ups to make use of. The Elephant Power allows you to use your trunk as a weapon, smash bricks more easily, run across large gaps and store water for later use, excuse me, for later use. We also saw a bubble power that allows you to summon bubbles for offense or platforming along with a drill power up. Hold on, let me stop right there for a second. The bubble thing is so cool. I love that. I, I, I was saying at first, like I don't trapping them and then getting a coin out of them. I'm like, oh, that's <laughs> kind of lame. But when I saw the platforming, the platforming capabilities, that's what I, like. I was like, yeah. oh, I cannot wait. Yeah. I yeah. love I love that thing. It's such a clever <laughs> idea. Mm-hmm. Um, the drill Sorry. power up that can damage enemies above you and allow you to burrow into the ground or ceiling. Other than traditional powers, there are other ways to give your characters new abilities. The flashiest examples of this are Wonder Flowers, which trigger dramatic visual and artistic stage transformation. As examples, we saw warp pipes jump to life, hordes of enemies spawning, and characters transforming into balloons or spike balls. Once you collect the Wonder Seed, the stage will return to normal. These seeds can later be used to unlock new courses. The other new abilities come from badges. This is really cool, too. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. So if you don't collect a Wonder Seed, will the whole level just continue crazy? Can I, can I hmm. keep it crazy? That's that's a good point. <laughs> I might want to play like that. Who knows? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> The other new abilities come from badges, which are equipable items that alter your gameplay style. Examples here include a parachute cap, a dolphin kick that gives you a burst of speed underwater, and a grappling vine. You can only equip one at a time, and you have to unlock them over the course of the game. But this seems like a subtle way to massively change your gameplay experience. I love yeah, that. I think did it's such you a clever see idea. Where you so have all cool. the badges and the powers. Yep, I'm like, yep. dude, so it's neat. like taking great Mario formula already and you're adding something really cool to it. I already know all the typical people are gonna say, like, oh my god, just another Mario game. But the people who actually play this game and actually look into it, you'll see they're always reinventing it, they're always finding a cool new way. It's like it's like throwing your cap at the person in Odyssey, right? Like that was a huge gameplay mechanic. To me, that's like this is one of those kinds of things, you know, really well, change the game up. I've been complaining so. about games implementing RPG elements on like skills where they don't need. I'm like, dude, stop. Like God of War, like I don't need all the gear stats and all that. Just right. Let me play. Right, but right, right. I don't agree with this game. I want this yes. with Mario. I think that actually is really cool. So I wonder why I want it here, not there. I don't know, but. I think it's because we know Mario is so simplistic, but it's so good. So throwing a little extra customization in there, you know, could be a good balance, you know? So I'm excited about that. Let's see, you can only equip one at a time. You'll have to unlock them over the course of the game. But this seems like a subtle way to massively change your gameplay experience. Also, I will say, 
there's no other game out there <clears throat> besides Mario games that make me have the urge to collect everything. You know, like mm -hmm. a lot of other games, it feels like a chore, a task. In these 2D Mario games, especially, I I want to collect all the coins. I want to collect all the items, you know, and all that that stuff. The the blue coins, whatever, you know, all that kind of stuff. The green, especially what to get it? access to like remember. secret worlds too. Like that's always the thing in Mario games of like, oh, here's a secret extra world if you unlock X Y or Z. Like, I think that's always really cool. 3D Land, there's a whole another eight worlds when you beat it. Yeah. In 3D world, I want to say, I remember, like you said, you do the whole game, you do the extra levels, and then there's like, you have to get every collectible at every level to unlock this crazy three leveled world yeah, or whatever. Yeah. That was so, that level was so wild. I loved trying it over and over. Every day I'd try it until I finally beat it. It was awesome. So, I and love there's like not that, a Mario. single Mario game to where like it stays easy, right? It's always the right. first few worlds right. Right. and it always I ramps up to really tough stuff at the end. So, yeah. I'm so ready for a new uh, new 2D Mario game, man. It's been mm -hmm. too long. Uh, finally, the direct gave us a look at Super Mario Bros. Wonders multiplayer options. You can play with four players locally, but instead of turning into bubbles when they die, like in previous games, they become ghosts. If another player can reach them before their timer runs out, they'll respawn with no life lost. If you enable online play, you'll be able to see other players as shadows, playing courses at the same time as you. They can also bring your ghost back to life, either by manually touching you or by placing a standee in a course. Standees are basically uh, excuse me, signposts modeled after characters that can be purchased from a pop-up shop. If you want to play online with friends, some courses will also allow you to race through them. By hitting a race block with shadows in the same course, you can trigger a timer to see who can reach the end first. Though this will sometimes require you to defeat a boss or collect a wonder seed as well. That's cool. I think the game the game sounds fantastic. And just to throw in, uh, there's a new Mario Red Nintendo Switch OLED announced. I'm still holding off till whatever next Switch is announced. But yeah, man, I'm not I think OLED, but yeah, yeah, I think this game is shaping up to look really cool. I'm very excited. That direct got me super pumped about it. Yeah, I think it looks great, man. So I can't wait. They're adding 11 Final Fantasy 16 songs to Theatre Rhythm Final Bar Line. Uh, oh, November is that 1st. so? Is that the um the unannounced? Yeah. The Final Fantasy 16 pack will be available in Season Pass Volume Three starting November 1st. Sweet. So I got the yeah, top, top, top version, so that better be free for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah, man, I mean, we'll awesome. we'll uh end it here. I, yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, like starfield dude it's great it's great i mean this i don't care what anyone says this is the next big like bethesda game and they're they're back on the map for me for being like uh actually making polished products because <laughs> yeah, i just yeah. didn't i didn't expect to ever see it again because it was so long of that that's why I, this might be my first one of their games <laughs> their big games that i actually play and i'll have a actually way better experience than people are used to so yeah which is why i'm so dumbfounded that I don't know. It's not that great of a conversation around this game. Sure, sure. It, listen, I think I yeah. think time will only make it better. People will realize there's a lot of people standing up for it and like, yo, listen, this is a good game. Like, stop. You know, <laughs> people are upset that IGN gave it a seven. So what? That doesn't mean it's a bad game. Like, yeah. just relax. Yeah. yeah. They gave Armored Core an eight, and people were like, wow, From Software really fell off. Like, what? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Now, I even respect that seven because why they said seven, I saw yeah. like they didn't like the narrative that much, which right. that is all opinion based. That's like they opinion. didn't. Yeah, totally fair. So that I'm like, OK, yeah, you know, if you don't <laughs> whatever man, with the, the game, narrative, hey, but me the game got a lot of good reviews. Yeah. The game got a lot of good reviews. It it's looks sitting like at an 88 game. on Metacritic. So that's I'm a really not, good score. I'm not going to get upset at reviews at that. No. no. And listen, it depends what you want out of it. There's so many people I know who are playing this game. They're loving it. They love being lost in space, exploring these plants. It's everything they want. So, hey, yeah. it must be somewhat of a good game, you know? So, yeah, yeah. all right, we can carry over a few of these things yeah, into next yeah, week's. Yeah. Uh, today was the first day of school, guys. Crazy day. <laughs> it's nuts. But, um, but yeah, we'll pick some of this stuff back up for next week. So uh let's do new game watch and we'll get out okay so let's final go. fantasy 7 ever crisis this is that more oh, closer yes. to the original game remake plus adding a bunch of content from the lore in general of final fantasy 7 far outside of the original game right. um ios and android september 7th i don't know i mean there's a lot of like oh these crazy outfits and you can buy all this x y and z and it looks very mobile blah 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 but all I want to know is if it's more to the OG Final Fantasy VII and I can just play through that game, but it look a little cleaner, right? But you get the full experience. That'd be neat. But I don't know, is it just split up into chapters and the chapters jump 
a lot and not actually give you the game i just don't get what's going on with this thing and anytime i look it up and try to understand it i can't seem to get an answer on the flow of the game of how it operates on like is it a full game is it just random moments in the game i don't understand but anyway yeah, i don't know Fay Farm Switch PC September 8th, NBA 2K24 all platforms September 8th, Evernight PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, PC September 12th, Nor Play With Your Food all platforms September 12th, but Xbox and Switch. Uh, so PlayStation PC, anyway. Super Bomberman R2 all platforms September 12th, Gumbrella Switch and PC September 13th. And then the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, the Hidden Treasure at Area Zero, the Teal Mask Switch, September 13th. Now, I said I was going to play this uh, Pokemon DLC. I do want to. But now's not a time. <laughs> I'm obsessing over Starfield. Once I beat it, I'm definitely still going back to Baldur's Gate 3 because I really liked it. I still sure, want sure. to. Uh, I'm still playing Zelda. I'm forgetting something. It's an oh, Pikmin 4. I want to get back to that. But um, right now, I think I am just going to try to just... Well, I think it's just because I like it so much. The only reason I'm playing Starfield so much is because I just like it so much. So yeah, I'm just sure. going to keep going. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. I'm going to yeah, I'm gonna keep trucking on Armored Core. I really want to try to beat that game. It's so much fun. Loving it. So, yeah. Yeah. I, and I'm sure, that. like, over anything else, I'd rather put Armored Core at number two. So I'm sure I'm going mm -hmm. to be jumping back to those whenever I just want something different. So, sure, sure. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm a finished Armor Core 6 here pretty soon. I'm, I'm already so far. Just feels good to play, you know? That's all. So. That's amazing combat, really. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, see you all guys until right, next week. Take care. See you later.